By late 1944, New York had become a target of the Nazis. Seduced by the thought of America's famous skyscrapers being transformed into blazing torches, Hitler had personally authorized the America Bomber project. In 1944, there was a, a, a general feeling, which Hitler certainly fueled, that somehow wonder weapons, weapons of vengeance, might, if they were directed at the Western Allies, force them out of the war or force them to make a, a separate peace. I think there was a genuine desire to hurt the Americans in some way too, a genuine feeling that you could get at the British, but you couldn't get at the Americans. And uh, there was some strong sense that they wanted the American public to feel what war was like as well. Such was Hitler's enthusiasm for this, that Albert Speer, the Reich's armaments minister, later recalled his Führer's delight. I have never seen Hitler so excited as he was at that moment, imagining New York disappearing in a sea of flames. Recognizing that a conventional bomb would be insufficient to achieve the level of destruction hoped for, Hitler instructed his scientists to create a weapon against which no defense would prevail. Hitler wanted an atom bomb, something German scientists had already mapped out. Nine months before the outbreak of war, Otto Hahn, a scientist at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin, had successfully split an atom. His discovery of nuclear fission had ushered in the atomic age. In 1938, Hahn was doing some research on the material uranium. What he discovered was that he could split the uranium in a very mysterious way. And colleagues of his, Lisamite and Otto Frisch, explained this process. They called it fission and they realized a large amount of energy was released in fission. So everybody got very excited because this could mean a new source of power or ultimately a weapon. In 1939 Germany was well placed to explore the possibilities of fission. They had a well-trained workforce, they had eminent scientists and engineers and they had some of the raw materials that they would need for this uh, work. But when Germany went to war, its nuclear physicist came under the direct control of the Nazi party. So too did the world's largest uranium mine in Czechoslovakia. Recognizing its enormous advantage, Hitler ordered that Germany's uranium club explore the potential of nuclear fission. The uranium club was set up in Germany to bring together the different scientists and uh, administrators with an interest in nuclear fission to get them to decide on the priorities and get them to set up the experiments that would give the information needed to develop nuclear weapons. This group of scientists included Werner Heisenberg and Otto Hahn. Whilst continuing to develop an atom bomb, the scientists also began work on other more rudimentary nuclear devices. We knew that the Hitler had a plan that involved some sort of radiated bomb. He had talked about it from time to time in public speeches, where he called it his V4, and that he said it was a, it was a device so powerful that it could kill every living thing within two to five miles. We also know that, that Goering and Hitler were, were talking about this, this device. And so we have to assume that Kinemeyer also knew the wishes of his Führer through Goering. Nazi experiments carried out on the toxicity of radioactive material in 1941 and 42 suggest that the Nazis were indeed working on various forms of radioactive devices, more commonly referred to today as dirty bombs. This device, believed to weigh approximately 5,000 pounds, was wrapped in radioactive sand. Had it been detonated over Manhattan, it would have spread radioactive fallout over a large area. If that bomb had been airburst over the city at maybe 10 to 15,000 feet, then the radioactive sand uh, or silica encasing the bomb itself would have been able to spread, particularly if released somewhat upwind, uh, far and wide over the city. Depending on the degree of irradiation of the material surrounding the bomb casing, and how many people were exposed to it at the time of explosion. Uh, it may not have killed a lot of people, but it may have made people very sick. And 
it's hard to predict what the, the, the total result would have been. As a political weapon, in order to sue for peace, to sue somehow for a, a more favorable outcome for, for Germany. But the Nazis did not have an aircraft capable of dropping a bomb on the other side of the Atlantic. The challenge was to find radical new concepts to build a transatlantic bomber, Hitler's America bomber. Siegfried Kannemeyer organized a bizarre competition. Top aeronautical engineers of the day were asked to come up with ideas. Kennemeyer finally opted to go with three of them. One was, was an old friend named Reimer Horton. Reimer Horton had designed all-wing sailplanes beginning in the 1930s. In fact, Siegfried Kennemeyer had a favorite Horton aircraft that he flew from time to time. Siegfried Kennemeyer also turned to a, a rocketeer by the name of Eugen Zanger. At one time, Eugen Zanger had proposed a, a piloted, reusable, suborbital bomber. The third person he had asked for an America bomber, as Siegfried was calling it, was Werner von Braun. Werner von Braun came from a very wealthy, academic-oriented family. Highly educated, highly motivated. He was interested in rockets from the age of 17. Germany's fascination with rockets had begun back in the 1920s when a wave of rocket fever had swept through the country. After its defeat in the First World War, Germany had signed the Treaty of Versailles, which had imposed severe limits on the production of armaments. But the treaty made no mention of rockets. To the German army, this meant that rockets, if developed in secrecy, could be the weapon of the future. Werner von Braun was developing his own rocket designs when he approached the German army for funding. They liked his practical ideas and enthusiasm and offered him a job. He was just 20 years old. So impressed were they with, with von Braun that they offered him employment. Join the army and we'll help you further your education. Join the army and we'll allow you to go after your PhD. Werner von Braun became a member of, of the Pinamunde.